Hello, you're watching Rebel Media. This is Robert Waddell. Um, in the history of uh, people's struggles, there's, al it, there's always been small countries fighting uh, larger oppressors. And this is a country you've probably never heard of, um, East Timor. With me today is uh, John Miller of the East uh, Timor Action Network, and who's going to tell us a little bit about what he does and the history of East Timor. How you doing, John? Good. So, what? Tell me a little bit about the. Tell us about the history of East Timor. Well, East Timor is um, half an island north of Australia. Shares the other half of the island with Indonesian West Timor, and was a long time was a Portuguese colony. And in 1975, as it was struggling for independence from Portugal, Indonesia invaded with the U.S. support and backing. President Ford and Henry Kissinger were in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta just uh, the day before and gave their okay and the U.S. supplied most of the arms used by Indonesia to invade. And for over 20 years, Indonesia, East Timor struggled for its independence from Indonesia. Uh, nearly a third of the population was killed, according to some estimates, both from the war and from starvation induced by the war. And then finally, after the Indonesian dictator Suharto resigned or was forced out, um, his successor offered a referendum to East Timor on independence. And that took place in August uh, 1999. I was there as an observer, and these Timorese, as predicted, voted overwhelmingly for independence. In retaliation, the Indonesian military essentially destroyed East Timor, killing another 1,500 people and uh, destroying most of the buildings before they pulled out. And now we're glad to say East Timor is independent. Uh, independence came in May 20th, uh, 2002. And what is it, what's your role? What are you, what are you, um, what are you doing? Um, the East Timor Action Network was formed uh, in November 1991. Um, there was a massacre. Uh, there had been an expectation that Portuguese uh, parliamentary delegation was going to come as part of negotiations at the UN between Indonesia and Portugal. And uh, that delegation was canceled, but some students who had been preparing for that, one of them had been killed at the local church. So this was essentially his memorial march. It was 10 days after his funeral. And it turned into a large political demonstration, tens of thousands of people. And there were Western journalists who had come in expectation of this uh, delegation who were there as witnesses and uh, Indonesian troops opened fire, killing uh, an estimated 270 or so East Timorese and actually one foreigner, foreigner, a New Zealand citizen. And what was different about this massacre was that it was filmed. So there's photographs, there's uh, videotape. Uh, there were Western journalists who could come back and talk about it, including two from here in New York. And that inspired us to form this group, the East Timor Action Network. And what we focused on was supporting self-determination for East Timor, letting it finish its process of decolonization, uh, deciding whether it wanted to be independent or not. And we especially honed in on the U.S.-Indonesia military relationship because Suharto was a former general. The military was his source mm -hmm. of power. And the decision makers when it came to East Timor were the Indonesian military. So we worked to cut off military training and weapons sales to Indonesia, mainly by pressuring Congress to do that, and had a fair amount of success. The main military training program was cut off very quickly. Uh, the Pentagon would find ways around it, which would offend Congress, who would then press the State Department to eliminate other things, like some weapons sales. And finally, in 1999, after the, um, after the massacre, uh, after the referendum, uh, Clinton cut off everything, cut off the entire Indonesian military. Yeah. And that led Indonesia, Australia cut them off, um, Europe cut them off, mm -hmm. to agree to honor the results of the referendum as they had promised, mm -hmm. and to uh, finally withdraw and let in an Australian-led, at the time Australian-led peacekeeping force. Mm -hmm. And a period of UN administration began after that. So our primary goal of self-determination for East Timor and supporting that was achieved. Yeah, um, East Timor is uh, basically a two-year-old country. I mean, after fighting for its uh, 
struggling for its independence. And now, um, you know, uh, reports that I've read, um, it seems as though, you know, with Australia coming in and helping with independence, now it seems very ironic, or maybe not so ironic, that uh, that in that uh, East Timor is fighting with Australia over uh, oil rights, <laughs> which. Well, um, we consider, and I think most East Timorese consider, that um, East, Tim East Timor sovereignty isn't complete. Uh, there's no final agreement on its borders with Indonesia. Those negotiations are well underway. And there's no agreement with Australia on its maritime border with, um, in the waters between the two countries. And the reason why it's so contentious is there's a tremendous amount of oil and natural gas mm -hmm. under those waters. And Australia had actually signed a treaty with mm -hmm. Indonesia dividing up those uh, revenues uh, when uh, Indonesia uh, was occupying East Timor. And it was a sweetheart deal, essentially, for Australia. Indonesia didn't really care about the money. They cared more about the political recognition from Australia of their hold on East Timor. So since in independence, um, East Timor and Australia have, are trying to negotiate, figure out where that boundary is and who owns and it may end up how to share those resources. We would say most of them are on, if not all of them, are on East Timor's side of the boundary if you just draw it down the middle, which is the traditional way. Tell, tell, a little, tell us a little about, it's a small island near in between Indonesia and, and Australia. Australia. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, is it fair to say that the, um, East Timor is like the, um, the Palestine of the uh, of the Pacific uh, uh, of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, that's probably that might have been true five years ago, while Indonesia still occupied it in the scale of human rights abuses. And, and tell, how large how large is East? About how large? That's the East? size of Connecticut, with about a mil million people, mm. and uh, very still very impoverished with a high unemployment. Let rate. me have that uh, the email address again. It's uh, etan.org. E t a n dot org. And you can go to our website and find out a lot about East Timor and a lot about what can be done from here. And there still is a lot that can be done from here to support this new nation.